Hi, this is Dr. Schmel from the Functional Neurology Center, and this is a part of our uh, Traumatic Brain Injury Technology Series. I'm here with Sherrick Peck, uh, the developer of the Resimax uh, Pain Tuner, and today he's going to talk about the vagal nerve system, the trigeminal system, and talk about how the Resimax works, and also premiere his new three-minute video that kind of breaks those systems down. So extremely excited to have you here, so I'll let you get after it. Sounds great. Well, well, it's taken about 10 years to develop the, uh, the device into what it is right now and what you use in your practice every day. Mm -hmm. um, but essentially, I want to tell you just a couple of things about the device. It runs in a Hertz range that um, the, the main range is from about 40, 44 uh, Hertz up to 106 Hertz. However, because of resonance, because of, of wave patterns, how they work, it actually runs the gamut from zero to well over 10,000 hertz in waveforms. So it's, a, it's an energy device. It's an energy concentrator, if you will. The uh, device works by, um, you just turn it on by the bottom button, has 10 levels, and then it stops, uh, stops going higher once it's hit the maximum there. Um, you can take those to any level that you would like to, to help activate various parts of the, uh, of the brain. We've also built four algorithm patterns in there, each of them represented by a different color. And yeah. these are wave formats. Each of these waves takes those energy levels of the 10 levels and splits them into each level is now about 300 levels of individual energy. So. Um, in essence, we've got over 3,000 calibrated energy points that we send back into the nervous system, teach you how to engage the vagus nerve through one of the, the funnest branches of it, and uh, in essence, teach the brain how to find balance through these, uh, these neat little programs. So that's a little overview of the device. Um, love, how it, uh, love how it helps in so many ways to just get the brain back on track. Now it takes a little bit of a um, um, little bit of understanding of the neurologic systems to really, really benefit from the device. In your clinic, you're not looking at just how do we change pain. Though most individuals who get our device, they're just trying to solve some kind of pain complaint. You're actually going into uh, trying to figure out what are the neurologic systems that we have to affect to bring the brain back into balance. And then pain relief is just a nice side benefit of bringing the brain and nervous system back on track, back on balance. Yeah. When the nystagmus goes away, the rest of the nervous system is, is already feeling so much better. And yeah. uh, I love how, love how the, the tool or the device is so helpful for chronic pain, but really what it's doing is getting the, uh, getting the brain back on track. Yeah, hundred percent. So like, you know, in our clinic, say for example, if, if you have pain in your left shoulder or your left neck, that doesn't mean that we have to take the Resimax and put it on your left shoulder and your left neck. I mean, we might be doing something over on your right side to give feedback and have that feedback go into your right cerebellum, up into your left brain, fire back down into the brainstem, and then have the brainstem do its descending inhibitory pain pathways to shut down that pain on the left side. So, I mean, we're using the Resimax as a tool to stimulate your system neurologically. And then depending on the frequency, the Hertz that we use, uh, different receptors are being activated. So say if, you know, if we have the Resimax and we're doing more like light touch versus more pressure, that might be what it takes to basically change your sensory cortical maps to improve your brain's perception of where you are and decrease pain. So it's, you know, it's just a great tool. And, you know, we use the straps, we'll hook it onto the leg, we'll have people walk with it, we'll have people do complex movements with it, do different intraoral techniques with it. So do you want to go through like some of the, some of the things that we could do from just like a vagal nerve perspective to improve that function? Absolutely. Um... It might help to understand just a little bit about uh, at least the direction that I come from as a physical therapist and, and looking at all of the pressure points from the outside. Yeah. Um, you know, I came to an understanding at, at some point that that trigeminal nerve, this, this whole 
the the nerve that's uh, that the dentist works on and the nerve that's uh, so fired up with um, fight or flight processes when it fires up the vagus nerve cannot function very well so right. there's the the basic premise of of what i'm trying to do to get harmony back into the nervous system is calm down the trigeminal system which allows the vagus nerve system to function better in essence it's like this if 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 we're going to war and today is going to be the battle we don't want the vagus nerve functioning really well today because its job would be to help us to relax and help us to sleep good and help us to digest mm -hmm. but that's not what we need when we're going into battle and and the trigeminal system is a very big player in that getting ready to go out to battle and that's where a lot of the a lot of the headaches and a lot of the jaw pain neck pain all come from is the nervous system especially after it's taken a hit from a concussion or whiplash or something it thinks that we're always going to battle mm -hmm. and so it keeps that nervous system so that the vagus nerve doesn't have the ability to function very well okay and I'd love uh, if right now is a good time. I'd love to share that video because it helps under yeah. helps people understand the relationship between that trigeminal and vagal system, and uh, shows shows how our device works a little bit. And then I'll go into more specifics for our group. Okay. All, All right. right. So you're you're now the host, so you should be able to share that video. Right. I'm gonna share my screen. And then I'm going to go ahead and show this video. As soon as that's done, I'll share, I'll unshare my screen and give it back to you. Okay. Perfect. What's going on inside your head during Let's see. I'm going to stop share. Okay. It's all yours again. All right. Perfect. 
So one of the things that uh, that we tried to help people understand is that that very important relationship between the the jaw muscles, which are all fired by the trigeminal nerve, and the vagus nerve, and uh, and it's it's fascinating how um, different branches of the vagus nerve. You and I were talking a little earlier about uh, one of the branches up here at the uh, top of the eyes, the supraorbital branch. Yeah it runs a little different than the jaw branches. It's actually got a lot of um, parasympathetic or um, calming influences on the rest of the trigeminal system, which is one of the reasons why when we place our device right there at the, uh, the, the top of the eyes on the eyebrows, um, it takes that inhibitory uh, message into the brain saying, don't stay in that fight or flight motion which doesn't help us heal, let's go into the calm state where we can start working on healing the structures that are, uh, that are needing to function better. Yeah, so, so I mean, really the ResiMax, it's working on the brain. I mean, it's not just a, a structural, like peripheral standpoint. Yeah, it's working on you know, different nerves and muscles and tissue, but really it's about where that information is going into the brain centrally and then the brain is doing what it needs to do to kind of modulate pain. I always tell people, I mean, we need to get you out of pain before we can, you know, do all of our gaze stability exercises or rotate you around. I mean, pain just takes you down and then it keeps you from being able to function at a higher level and dual task and, and think. So, you know, having the ResiMax and some of the other tools that we use to try and get people out of pain has been very, very helpful. And a lot of patients that we see haven't haven't used the Resi Max, haven't had these techniques performed before prior to coming in. So I think it's great to have the 60 day free trial so people can you know, get it at home and say if they leave here, be able to have access to that and get it and give it a shot. So I love it. Well, and that's you know, one of the most important things for any, any functional neurologist is that your patients have the, the uh, tools at hand, the tools in home, that can help them continue the progression mm -hmm. that they started in your clinic. We yep. don't want them to backtrack. We want them to be able to have simple tools that will help them progress. And, and uh, you know, my hopes are that, that this Resimax Pain Tuner Pro is one of those tools that can help a person continue their progression after they get jump started yeah. in, the, uh, in the functional neurology clinics. Oh, it's beautiful. I mean, I've seen multiple other guys online that are, you know, starting to use the Resi Max and everybody that I talk, talk to have, you know, been very, very happy with it. And one of the things that people comment is, you know, I thought that the vibration on the face would make people dizzy, but mm -hmm. the, the way that the Hertz is set up and the frequency of it, it doesn't seem to vibrate and cause your eyes to bounce all over mm -hmm. the place. Um, it does the opposite. So when you're doing that stimulation, that's firing in and then it activates different gaze stability centers in it. And what I've seen is it stabilizes your eye movements. So the, the reason that it does that is because we've got it calibrated with your vocal cords. Mm -hmm. We've actually calibrated it on the cat purring harmonic range, which is also in the range of our vocal cords. Yeah. Our vocal cords being a, a direct branch of the vagus nerve, it means that all of your life you've been using that calibration, that resonance pattern off of your, uh, your vagus nerve the, every time you speak, you're providing input into the brain. Every time that you uh, sing a song, you're providing input into the brain through those vocal cords. Yeah. And so by, by creating a device that just gives um, excellent uh, levels for that tuner pro to tune or for that vagus nerve to tune to, in essence, when you start humming or talking or laughing or groaning, and using our device, it tunes the two of those in together. So your vagus nerve gets a calibration off of it, which helps stabilize the eyes and which calms down that uh, trigeminal system. So, so when you're doing these techniques, you're having people do, you know, hum and do different, like maybe gargling or things like that. Are you having them do that? Yeah, yeah. In fact, um, one of my favorite techniques, and you'll, you'll know this, that, that one of the ways to see vagal tone in an, in an individual that's had a head injury is to look at the arches in the back of their throat and to, to look at the, the tone of that system. In fact, that's, you know, if you go to a, to a doctor and they put a, 
a thing inside your mouth. They're checking for that vagal tone in there. Yeah. And um, and it's 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 off for many of us who have had brain injuries for a long time. And sometimes it just takes a lot of work to get back on track. But you can use our device back in those areas and turn it on, which is you know based on that vagus nerve tone theory. Um, but then take it back there and cause ourselves to gag, yeah. which is stimulating it with a level that it's that it already feels is safe, and saying, "Okay, the vagus nerve just told me to gag," yeah, which helps increase the vagal nerve tone. So gagging, unfortunately for a lot of us that don't like that feeling, is one way to increase uh, vagal nerve tone. Um, yeah. Doing a uh, um, a long drawn out hum or moan definitely is a uh, an improvement in the vagal nerve tone as well. Um, breathing out will also uh, increase vagal nerve tone, where breathing in will yeah. will shut off a little bit of the vagal nerve tone. So there's this constant um, battle going on all the time to help us either increase or decrease vagal nerve tone to try and get through life. Yeah. Well. Our job with someone who's been injured is to get their vagal nerve tone functioning at a well enough pace that they can regulate all of the other bodily functions. Yeah. And you can do that very easily by, by uh, eliciting that gag reflex, by um, stimulating the trigeminal nerve to calm it down so that the vagal nerve tone can actually improve. Um, it's just a tremendous tool. Have you also noticed that if you take... Um, something like a, a, a drop of food grade peppermint and put it on the tongue while doing the intraoral techniques, you can actually uh, create a new component of the cookie recipe that your brain senses when it's trying to get you back into a calm state or back into a healing state with that vagal nerve tone. Again, just yeah. using all of those cranial nerves as a way to improve the messaging from the brain to the rest of the systems. Yeah, I mean, we use oils all the time, and we, you know, we'll we'll do them through the nose. But I haven't actually done it with you know like drops on the mouth. But that's a great idea. Like in, in the brainstem, I mean, you have columns of different nuclei. So like cranial nerves three, seven, nine, and ten, like they're in the same column. So you have like the Edinger Westfall nuclei that controls pupillary size, and the superior and in, in, uh, inferior salivatory nuclei that are involved with like salivation. You know, and then you go down and then you have the vagal nuclei. So you can like use different techniques to stimulate those columns to improve vagal nerve activation, which is great. But I really like that idea of, of doing the peppermint. And, and if, if you want to get really fancy, have them chew on a, a rind of a, a lemon for, you know, 20, 30 seconds before you do the intraoral work or something that, that yeah. just helps trigger bitter and some of those other uh, senses and tastes that are all cued into the rest of those nerves. It, yeah, it, that, it creates a symphony. Oh, that's beautiful. But yeah, you know, we like to use the Resimax and then have people, you know, do different complex movements or boring movements with it and then have them dual task and think. And I mean, your autonomic system isn't just, it's not just your brain stem, right? It's not just your per, the peripheral autonomic system. Uh, when you look at research and you look at fMRI studies, there's multiple areas cortically. So the basal ganglia, the hippocampus, the amygdala. So having positive thoughts or working on memories, um, working on dual tasking, like those things can help integrate your autonomics. And then the cerebellum is very important too. So using the Resimax to stimulate the cerebellum and get your vestibular system under control that can help fire down and modulate your brain stem to allow you to be able to get good perfusion up to your head. So I just think the Resimax is, is just a great tool to be able to add in more complexity and, and dual tasking to improve brain function. You know, and we like to look at the palate. We like to look at people's breathing. How, how do they breathe? What, uh, what do their hands and feet feel like? Do they feel really cold? Um, when you stand up, do you see like their heart rate? really go high and you see their blood pressure drop. So, you know, we like to do test and retest, do these techniques and then retest some of these objective markers and see if we make improvement. 
So in essence, you're just teaching them, teaching each individual their own unique cookie recipe yeah. that's going to help them continue to heal. <laughs> yep. That's, yeah. that's putting science to the brain. Yeah. And it just seems like everybody has their specific recipe of what they need. Mm -hmm. um, the frequencies, you know, matter, the hertz matters, the way you put it on the body matters. So, you know, thinking about the, the neurological system, not just from, hey, you have a problem here, we need to do this here, but using multimodal sensory stimulation. And then one of the things we have to realize is that, you know, a lot of the stimulation that comes in, it will activate your sympathetic system. So by using the techniques that you're talking about and trying to modulate your vagal tone is very important. So if you're doing all, you know, vestibular stimulation and eye exercises and cognitive training, you know, you might need to use the Resimax to calm your nervous system down to make sure that you have good autonomics so you don't overstimulate people. It's, it's literally a, a balancing act all of the time. We're balancing stimulus to help it to grow versus calming to help it to heal. Yep. And uh, I, I love how you guys um, work to make sure that that balance occurs and each person understands what, you know, what it takes for themselves to be able to create that healing balance. So uh, do you have like educational video, a lot of educational videos out online? Like, so say if somebody did get the Resi Max and purchase it when they leave here, are, are there good videos online for them to watch in terms of, you know, just getting a better understanding of how to do it themselves at home? Yes, um, I have over 60 videos in my YouTube library that okay. uh, show lots of techniques. Um, show the best techniques for a migraine headache sufferer or for somebody that's you know, suffering from knee pain or something else. We've even got videos on how to use it on horses and okay. animals. And cool. <laughs> so it's, you know, those systems that work in us, they work in animals just yeah. the same way. And uh, it, it's so fun to, uh, to be able to affect, you know, so many things with our little tool. I didn't, I didn't really uh, expect that that would be the case, but I'm, I'm sure excited to see how it's helping so many people. Yeah. Um, Jeremy, I want to talk for just a minute before we uh, finish up here too, about the wings in the device. Yeah, that'd be great. And, and these, these wings actually uh, come from an ancient um, Eastern art that they call Gua Sha. Okay. Or, or it's, it's a way of waking up the brain's connection to various parts of the body through, through scraping in essence. Okay. So we designed the, uh, the device to have these wings and run our vibration through to connect that vagus nerve with the process. So in essence, we can run it over an area that has a lot of trigger points and reconnect the brain very quickly to an area where it's maybe had a real chronic uh, pain complaint. Okay. Let's say if we went back to your shoulder, you know, and we just wanted to reconnect the brain and start the healing process over again, we would do that with the vibration. Now, here's one of the things that we have found so helpful in the functional neurology world. And, and you'll be able to understand this much better than, than most of us out there. There are pressure points in the fingers and the toes and various parts of the extremities that, that are all connected with the parts of the brain that we need to stimulate. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I've found is, is um, we'll have individuals that are not communicating very well but you'll start, you know, daily scraping at the uh, fingers and at the hands and working up the arm. And within just a day or two, their, their speech starts improving yeah. or their vision starts improving. But there's something really, really fun about um, stimulating those, those centers from the scraping uh, wings on the device. Okay. Um, and, and, and there's various videos showing how to uh, be able to do that on our, on our website or on our uh, YouTube channel. So make sure that you take some time or, or that those who are interested in this, take some time to, to understand how it might be able to affect you. And then reach out to us if you have any questions whatsoever. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and, and when we post this video, we'll, uh, we'll put a link to like your YouTube channel. 
and then people can you know get access to those videos and learn more about it but you know with that scraping technique you know i just think about it from just a receptor based standpoint is we're stimulating receptors and then we're activating you know the vibration that's going through the dorsal columns and the medial lumniscus system through the thalamus up to the cortex into the parietal lobe and then depending on the type of stimulation that you give on that tissue of the body if you're doing hard pressure or light pressure or less vibration or more vibration, sometimes it just takes that like perfect amount of stimulation for you to reconnect that to the brain. So say for example, if, um, if they were really off on their left side and they didn't know where their hand was and they were doing like a finger to nose and you know, they were missing or they were coming in and it looked uncoordinated, you know, we might try, well, let's just try some vibration like on their pinky and then see what happens. Well, let's try doing some vibration and then do a complex movement with it. Well, that didn't seem to do anything. We retested and there's no change. Why don't we go in and then let's give some more information and, and start activating some different, you know, Pacinian corpuscles or some Ruffini endings. There's all these different endings. So depending on the stimulation that you give, you might get a different change in kind of rebuilding these sensory cortical maps. So my left hand here, I mean, that's all mapping out in my right parietal lobe. And then that parietal lobe, that's going to give feedback into motor centers. And then that's going to fire down through the brainstem. And then it activates all these autonomic networks to fire blood to get to my hand so I can move my hand appropriately and have the muscles not fatigue out. So if you're doing the vibration and you're stimulating the brainstem and getting the autonomics better while you're activating those specific receptors that that person needs, that might make all the change in the world and getting them to have a better understanding of where their hand is. And then that could potentially decrease pain. So that like that, that's how we would think about it. That's, that's, that's a little complex for most individuals, but you are yeah. right on. That's what we're doing is creating a new memory in the brain yep. of, uh, of, of connection to that part of the body. Just, and and I love how that works. <laughs> We're just, we're just waking up, you know, we always say, you know, neurons that fire together, wire together. So we just want to, you know, stimulate, stimulate, stimulate and build those connections. And when you build those connections, then people's brains function better. So it's a, it's a beautiful thing. I, uh, I'm so happy to, uh, to provide a tool that helps so many people with that very, very thing. Yeah. I mean, we really appreciate it. I mean, so this was in development for, for about how, how many years now is it 10? About 10 years. Yeah. Okay. And it's come through a lot of variations. And there was a time for about four years we were developing these tools over on, on the uh, eastern side of the world. Um, but we were having a difficult time creating the device into, into exactly what we needed. So yeah. we started manufacturing here in the U.S. Um, a couple of years ago. Okay. And wow, our, our, everything that we've done with that has, uh, has just taken a whole new level of ability to help heal somebody i love it just helping people all right well that that was perfect um we'll um we'll post the links on the site and there we go thank you sherrick thank you jeremy okay.